Kicking things off is one of my favorites. You have seen this wonderful act on Comedy Central and True TV. The wonderful, come on, Christina Hutchinson. Come on, Christina Hutchinson. Music came into my life, I mean, like a lot of people, when I was a kid, my parents always had music on, always listened to 70s music. I became more involved, I guess you would could say, in music uh, when I was nine. My ninth birthday, my parents gave me a piano. I tried flute and guitar, that didn't go well. <laughs> and I just bought a practice drum pad because I'm now I want to play the drums because I have a lot of anger in me that you can't get anger out on the piano because then you'll break the keys. I did that. I also liked too, because I grew up with a mom with depression, and when I got that piano, she was in the midst of a very severe bout of depression that probably lasted seven or eight years, and her medication was so all over the place, and the doctors weren't listening to her when she would say, like, this is making me feel truly psychotic, and they're like, just give it a week. And there was a lot of crazy manic episodes that she had to experience because of that. And when you're a kid and your parent has depression, it's like, I thought that I could help do something to help it. So I was very, I would clean the house, I would do a little dance for her or something. I would sing the good ship lollipop all the time. So when I got the piano, I was very happy, but I was most happy that she was happy. What do I say on stage in my standup that kind of connects to an emotional issue that I have? And the red flag diary was, <laughs> was a good one. I always, I walk around with rose colored glasses all the time. My friends accuse me of not seeing the red flags in the guys I choose, but that's incorrect, I see them. But when I see him, I'm like, ooh, challenge accepted. One of the things that I look back on in my patterns with relationships, because I think that's where your bullshit comes out the most, I only see the absolute best in the person. And no one person is perfect, and but I will make them perfect. I see that same uh, um, notion of of me looking at somebody through rose-colored glasses and squinting my eyes and only seeing their good, their good parts of them as a kid to my mom. I've got rose-colored glasses That red flag's just a shape to me There's this notion that comedians want to be rock stars and rock stars want to be comedians. And whenever you do an art that's not yours and you kind of cross over, it's very scary. So I think that the opportunity to cross over into another totally different lane is very terrifying, very vulnerable. So it was the perfect exercise for somebody like me who's, um, who, who's so used to being at the mercy of what other people think and you just have to not give a shit. So I would say this, um, this process pushed me out of my comfort zone in, in, a, in a very important and very uncomfortable way. There's certain creative endeavors that I feel blocked, but I feel like I'm going through a bunch of shit in a good way, and uh, I feel less blocked. So, hopefully, I say that now, and then watch my songs like, ha, ah, cross bonds. Singing and playing and, and like, writing uh, very scary to do in front of other people. That really blocks my creativity because I just, I feel stupid, quite frankly. I mean, that's really the best way to describe it. I feel like when you walked in the room, you were like, oh. You're dead on with your, with, with how I was feeling the day I came to the New York Comedy Club because I was like, oh, this is, these people are professional and they know what they're doing and I'm out of place and this is not my, this is not my game. I threw Dennis into the mix at the club because it's it was clear that Christina was struggling getting out of her own way. Um, she definitely had anxiety and fear associated with it and she needed to write lyrics. Dennis, I know very well musically and I know he's a singer and I also know he's a very good director in the sense that he can connect with people and get emotionality out of them. He just grabbed me and was like, put down the camera, go help her open up. Just getting her to feel comfortable in that environment was uh, it was really special, it was really fun. I kind of felt when when Scott was like, hey, this isn't working out, like I felt I felt that. And so that people pleasery like muscle in me was like, oh no, you're doing bad. But then the adult self that's been so introspective lately and is finally starting to mature is like, whoa, 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 just fuck that. Just do your thing. In 
the second day when we were in the studio, I wanted that, hey, we can, I can come in and record this another day. I wanted that padding so desperately. And Scott was like, no, because you get it done, that's the whole point, get it done in one day. And I'm like, in my head, I was like, fuck you, no. But that's the push I needed. I need to be pushed. Round, around. After this whole thing of writing a song, not the song I thought I was gonna write at all, and not as like real as I thought it was gonna be, uh, I would absolutely do it again. Because that sounded good. It did. Go ahead. It's okay if you make it this